Oh yes, this is the conga line of workmen. Look at this, loading up onto the boat. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh yes, so much evilness is happening. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Evil Genius. This is quite possibly one of the greatest games in the entire known universe. This game is just, imagine Austin Powers with James Bond, but you're the bad guy, and it's just full of a bunch of jokes. It's cheesy, it's hammy, it's a great laugh. This game is everything I want from video games and so much more. But why are we here today? Well, we're here to discover if Evil Genius is a perfectly balanced game with no exploits, or if perhaps the developers missed a couple of things which can be royally cheesed by yours truly, allowing for infinite wealth and global domination. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to find out today, ladies and gentlemen. This game is fantastic. Just playing this, it fills me with so much nostalgia. I love this game. It's great fun. It's even running in 4x3 aspect ratio, by the way, which is why it might look a bit stretch to you. That's how old this game is. It's just fantastic. So this game was first released in 2004, making this game around about 16 years old. And honestly, it's downright fantastic. It's aged very well. The humor still stands tall and it is a good laugh. And without further ado, we should probably dive into it, ladies and gentlemen. So make sure you're sat back, you're relaxed, you have a nice warm cup of tea and you're ready to join me on this glorious experience. Now, of course, when it comes to starting a brand new game of Evil Genius, you need to make sure to start a campaign on easy, medium, or hard difficulties. Naturally, we're going to go for the hard difficulty because we're true pro meta gamers. And when it comes to selecting our Evil Genius, we're going to go for Mr. Potato Head himself, Maximilian. He's fantastic, short, bad tempered, and utterly insane. You're a fabulously wealthy industrialist. Your ambition is to conquer the world through advanced research and technological supremacy. Fantastic, Maximilian. You're the one for us. So, welcome to the game, ladies and gentlemen. This this is our evil genius base, and we are just starting out. We have our lovely vault of gold over here, which our fantastic evil man Maximilian is enjoying. I mean, just look at this lovely stack of gold. Sadly, we will be spending a large amount of it to get our base set up, and in the early game, there's a lot of stuff you need to worry about. You see, the world dislikes us. It doesn't like having evil geniuses running around stealing things. However, the developers know that starting out, if the world was out to get you immediately, you'd have a very tough time of it. Instead, ladies and gentlemen, the developers give the players one little teeny weeny advantage. You see, starting out, no agents are sent to your island because you know you're having a rough time of it, you're getting yourself up and running. This is fantastic, ladies and gentlemen, because it means the developers are kind, and we can exploit that kindness. You see, with no agents on the island, that just allows a million shenanigans to start happening. Oh my goodness, I do love this game, it's beautiful. It's uh, full of nostalgia and many, many happy memories for me, and I'm sure it's the same for a lot of you guys as well. I mean, just having all of these minions running around doing everything you say, oh well, it does make you feel awfully British and it's great fun. So we're getting our base set up at the moment, we currently only have one henchman to help us out, we have our evil genius and we need to make sure that we get our comms room set up. Our comms room allows us to access the world map and plan things like heist and stealing money, meanwhile our barracks over here allows us to have more minions. You will notice that it is currently in a very strange design where we just have random lockers placed just about everywhere. Trust me, there is method to my madness, basically we just need one bed down and now because we have one single bed down our maximum capacity for minions has increased. You see the amount of minions you can have in your base is entirely tied to the amount of cabinets you have standing in your barracks. Not the amount of beds you have, genuinely just the amount of barracks. It's amazing. And because we've completed our comms room we now have access to the world domination screen. This allows us to send minions out to the world to secure money and funds and we have a lot of minions to send out. So we're going to send out all but one of our workers, that's right. We're going to send seven workers over to Europe to just start stealing. Now, of course, this game knows stealing is bad. If you start stealing, the heat goes up, so does your notoriety. The higher heat level you have, the more agents are going to come to your island to try and attack you. However, ladies and gentlemen, remember, we're still in tutorial mode, so they can't send agents to our island because we haven't done anything wrong yet. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is as good as that. Also, we're going to need a strong room set up because I love gold. So, as you can see, our lovely operatives are are heading to this region. They're almost there. They're currently en route. Come on, operatives, please arrive. Oh, I see. They're all loading up onto a boat at the moment. Fantastic. Yes, this is how we move our worker minions about. A very fancy, expensive yacht. Lovely. There we go. The yacht is heading off now. Perfect stuff. And away our minions go. Nice. Off to wreak havoc on the world. Now, we are currently losing money because, of course, we're running a base, and a base is expensive to run. And also, we're spending a lot of money searching for minions. We're spending 1,000 just so that we can get a minion every 20 seconds. This is important though because 
because minions are money. Speaking of which, they've now arrived in Europe, which allows us to immediately start stealing from Europe, I know. And having seven minions in Europe allows us to gain a resting income of $2,800 for every 60 seconds. Of course, our heat is now climbing, but that doesn't matter. Anyway, we're going to send even more minions over to Europe now that we just have so many minions arriving. Oh, and lovely. Our base is now expanding, which means we now have space for a strong room. There we go. We're just going to have one massive strong room. It's going to be lovely. This is where we're going to keep all of our gold. Oh my goodness. This game, it's fantastic. It's about as cheesy as 14 tons of Wensley Day or hydraulically pressed down into one easy one gigabyte file size. In terms of modern graphics, it is about as beautiful as a very well polished potato with a fair bit of makeup put on it. But you know, this game has charm and charm really does count for a lot. But you want to know what counts for more than charm and beautiful graphics? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's having a lot of minions and making a lot of money. Speaking of which, how's our money doing? Our money is actually doing quite well. We have 14 minions in Europe at the moment and they are stealing $5,600 every 60 seconds, which is going to be really helping out our economy. I'm going to send even more minions over actually because, you know, the more minions the better. Now, technically speaking, there are some investigators wandering around on our island, but because we're in tutorial mode, these guys aren't going to do anything. They're not going to put a stop to any of our very strange evil acts. They're just going to kind of let them happen. Oh, and also we're going to need more locker cabinets. There we go. So we're going to get more lockers installed because the more lockers we have, the more minions we can have. There we go. So we're just going to keep spamming up more lockers. There we go. It's perfect stuff. Oh my goodness. These guards are just wandering around. I suppose we can just kill them because it won't actually cause any more men to be sent to the island. There we go. Just kill all of the men. Good stuff, samurai. Lovely stuff. This is what you get for snooping around my lovely evil island. Fantastic. Bam, I've jumped into the midpoint when you've least expected me. I know, that's right. Who would have thought that I, legendary YouTuber Spiff, would jump into the middle point of a video to tell you some important information? Ladies and gentlemen, the scientists over at Spiffco have come back with some staggering research. I know, those absolute majestic boffins have discovered that the people who like Spiffing Brit videos will immediately see that their charisma stats increase by upwards of 14%. That is downright fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you, you scientific boffins, for discovering that one. You know what they discovered after that? They discovered that if you drink tea, your ability to acquire wealth via nefarious means increases by over 1,000%. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be an evil genius, go down to your local shop, grab yourself a box of Yorkshire tea, and conquer the world. Anyway, let's dive back into this video, as we have a lot of wealth creating to do. So there we go. We've completed technically all of the tasks, excluding the final one, which is that reports indicate that trained civilians are holidaying on the island. Capture and imprison a maid in a security holding cell. So how this game works is you have many different types of minions. Starting out, we only have worker minions, but they go all the way up to, say, sniper minions, engineer minions, mercenary minions, and guard minions. We don't want to be using any of those minions. Instead, we're going to be using entirely workers. If you were to go and actually kidnap this maid and end their holiday, then the tutorial is over and we are going to get swarmed by security agents. We don't want that, so we're going to let the maid enjoy their holiday time on the island. And fantastic. Our one worker who we kept at base is building more security lockers, which means we have increased capacity for minions. In total, you can have 100 minions, so I'm just going to preset the amount of workers we want to 999. Lovely stuff. And hopefully we'll eventually have enough cabinets to have that many minions. Now, as we can see, we're already starting to make a small amount of money. We haven't properly got our economic operation up and running, as we are spending very large amounts of money actually getting these lockers and cabinets set up. But our money hasn't actually started going down. We are making a decent portion of wealth, mostly thanks to Europe, where we are gaining $7,200 every 60 seconds. Speaking of which, we might as well send over Jubei, our lovely henchman, as well as a few more workers to help out and make even more money. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are playing this game on hard mode. This is meant to be difficult. Meant to be. What have I done to you, game? I'm so sorry. Well, we're actually back up to 200,000. Lovely. I think 250,000 is the actual starting amount you get. But how's our money making operations going? Much better now. 8,600 every 60 seconds from Europe. That's absolutely lovely. We're going to send over even more workers to help out with that. And how's our worker recruitment going? Oh, we're not even at capacity. Right, let's get recruiting minions even faster, please. We're actually going to also need to build more barracks because we could really do some more minions. So, as that's the case, let's build a larger barracks right about here. It just needs to be really long and big. In fact, just make it the biggest barracks in the entire world. There we go. It is going to be huge, this barracks. Oh, yes, this is perfect. $20,000 it's going to cost us to build a barracks this big. But trust me, it's going to be worth it. Also, we're going to send 
two minions over to the east coast of America, actually make that three minions, and they're going to start generating some wealth there as well. Because as fun as making all our money in Europe is, we should kind of start diversifying the amount of chaos we're causing. I am very much interested in terms of my audience, how many people actually played this game. Because of course it is old, it's a classic, I absolutely love this game. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for me, this game is just downright fantastic. So if you ever did experience this game, or if you didn't and you have seen this video and you actually feel interested by it or just terrified, then give me a shout because I'd absolutely love to know how many people I've inspired to play one of these strangest games ever created. Anyway, our minion production is actually going quite well. We have 29 minions technically, and we're soon going to be getting our 30th minion set up. Now, whilst we do have actually about four minions running around the base helping with construction, once we reach the minion cap, we actually only need one minion in the base. As soon as we use the existing minions to get more minions in, we can really start diversifying. And by that, I mean sending all of the minions out into the wider world and just having one minion move all the gold from the helipad into the gold storage room over here. Oh, and who's this? Is this the maid? Oh yes, this is the maid who we, we're meant to kind of steal and keep hostage. Um, we won't do that, actually. We'll let them enjoy their holiday on this very strange deserted island. Well, it's not that deserted, I guess. We're here. Now, with our three minions in America, our total income on the world has gone up to 10,000. That's lovely. We're going to send a few more minions over there, though, to help out and generally get our income up even more. Actually, hang on a second. I just realized something. I'm stealing money from Europe. Why am I doing that? I live in Europe. This makes no sense. Right, we're pulling all of the operatives out of Europe and we are moving them to America. <laughs> it makes perfect sense, trust me. Move all of the operatives to America, cause a bit of chaos in the Midwest, get some West Coast operatives as well. Perfect. Yes, this is more like it. Steal from America. The thing is, you can also actually do missions on the world map without even having the tutorial finished. We can go over to, say, North Africa here and we can do the earplug mission and just basically destroy a listening post. It requires a lot of workers, but it increases our notoriety. When our notoriety is higher enough, basically we win the game. So theoretically speaking, you can win the game without even playing the game. I know, it makes it makes good sense. Anyway, let's get some new lockers built into this barracks. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, this room which I'm building here is technically a perfectly legal barracks. It has all of the items a barracks must have in this game. Um, it just happens to look downright terrible. But the there's no reason why this certain design of barracks isn't allowed. It just works, ladies and gentlemen. It just works. We're going to have so many minions after this. It's going to take a long time to get all of this set up, but once it is, we're going to be making a ridiculous amount of money. I mean, you can end up producing millions in this game. So when you think about it, this evil operation probably has a higher GDP than, I don't know, Scunforp, Grimsby, Manchester maybe? Oh, and actually, I've just remembered something very important. That's right. There was something ridiculously important which I was meant to talk about in today's video. And you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. It's British segue time. I know, we hardly get to do many of these. So, ladies and gentlemen, I was going on the internet the other day and I discovered something fantastic. A creature which has been bullied beyond any beliefs. One of the saddest things I've ever encountered in terms of scientists having a laugh. And of course, when scientists have a laugh, they never think about the people they could be affecting by having that laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, I discovered a new type of animal, which I'd never heard of before, the legendary Fat Sand Rat. That's right, the Fat Sand Rat is a terrestrial mammal from the gerbil subfamily that's mostly found in North Africa and the Middle East. It is genuinely called Fat Sand Rat. That is its name. Someone sat down, who was a sciencey person, and said, I found this brand new creature. Should, what should I call it? Should I give it a fancy Latin name? No. Fat Sand Rat. Imagine if you were the Fat Sand Rat. Someone just discovered you and went, you know what? I'm going to give you a stupid name and you're going to feel stupid. You'd probably cry. If you could. Could a fat sand rat cry? I don't know. It doesn't even look that fat. For just one like on a video, ladies and gentlemen, you can tell a fat sand rat that it's worth something and that it's beautiful on the inside. Because deep down, aren't we all just fat sand rats? Anyway, back to the video. Yes, I just discovered that and I thought more people need to know what's happening in the wider world. Oh, right. So what we're going to do, we have seven workmen lying around who are actually getting more workmen, I guess. Our capacity has increased up to 37, which is good. Uh, and we ha now have seven minions effectively installing more and more cabinets, which is equally absolutely fantastic. And I've noticed we've missed a spot here. We can actually get more cabinets installed here. So this is going to work out fantastically. There we go. Lovely stuff. We're getting in just so many cabinets. These are going to be beautiful. I'm not too sure how many cabinets this is, but this should probably push us close to about 50 or 70, I'm hoping. Oh, and we've got a brand new object. Hotel Hub. Oh, yes, and Hotel Wings. Basically, because we are an evil operation, what better
better way to diversify your evil operation than with capitalism. You see, when you have a lot of money and you want to spend it on something, we can just spend it on making it look like we're an actual hotel. And you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? Just straight up building a hotel. And it costs us a lot of money, but why not? Let's just build a hotel hub right here. Fantastic. We're going to have more people walking around our island having a lovely time buying very overpriced drinks. We're going to charge about $47 for a coffee, yet for a cup of tea, we're going to make it on the house. That's right. Not only are we an evil genius who likes money, we're an evil genius who likes to convert people to drinking tea. And you know what? If anything, that doesn't make us an evil genius. That makes us human. Now, this game effectively has a million different subgenres, which it's kind of having creative influences from. Not only do you have to set up your base, but you also technically have a bunch of traps which you can lay. So you're almost doing Dungeon Keeper at the same time. But one of the most entertaining things about this game is if you do have a bunch of traps in your base, sure, you're going to be stopping enemy agents when they come in. They'll be caught by the traps. But at the same time, if your minions are low on, say, their energy stat or concentration stat, they're also going to be setting off your own traps. So if you put a landmine right here, all it takes is one minion who hasn't had his fourth cup of tea of the day to just accidentally step on it, and lo and behold, your base is now on fire. Now, our minion capacity has already hit 51, which is absolutely fantastic. This is really, really improving our capacity. We might actually even have a 100 cabinets in here, technically. If that's the case, then we've basically completed the game before the game's even started. And that's just how exploit works sometimes. There we go, 50 minions, and we have 250,000 lying around in the bank account, which is lovely. We're bringing in an income of about 13,000 every 60 seconds, which is great, but of course could be improved. As we can see, in terms of the world map, our heat is very, very high, especially in, say, Japan and America, where they absolutely hate us. The thing is, your basic workers aren't actually the best at stealing money. We could theoretically upgrade all of them to guards, and then they'd be making even more money when we send them out to the world map, but there's something quite fun about just having a bunch of yellow minions sent off to the wider world and just stealing everything. Of course, when I say yellow minions, please, this game was released way before Despicable Me. Don't even mention those minions. Don't you even dare. My goodness. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Now with uh, more minions than ever before. That's right, 95 minions in total. It's a ridiculous quantity, if I'm honest. We're currently moving a lot of our minions around and about, mostly from regions where we don't generate that much wealth to regions where we generate a lot of wealth. You see, uh, Europe, you gain a lot of money from having any minions in Europe. Same for the Midwest, and the same exists for the Middle East. So we are moving most of our minions into those three regions to generate as much money as possible. At the same time, we're just sinking a huge amount of our cash into building a hotel for no particular reason. Other than I guess it's kind of entertaining. And here is the massive stream of minions just slowly leaving our base. My goodness, this is actually crazy. Look at that. We're just loading up onto helicopters or running onto boats. You name it. There goes our next boatload of minions. Oh, I love this game. I really do. Now, we've actually run out of space to store our money. I know that's right. We need more money storage spaces, which is fantastic. Uh, we have 700,000 in the bank, but really we could, we have space for a lot, lot more. And so we're going to be securing that extra storage space in this strong room here. Don't you worry. We still haven't stolen that maid yet. And because we haven't done that, we have the largest physical crime operation you can have. We have 900 criminal minions going around the world, stealing just about everything that they can get their hands on. This is ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. To put this into perspective, you have to imagine that the entire world is getting robbed continuously. Yet because we haven't abducted a single maid on an island, the world's government isn't going to do anything about it. They're just going to let it happen and just go, well, until he abducts that maid, we can't possibly stop this evil genius. And now here we have it, our minion whose entire job it is to move money around. With the amount of money we're making, it's just kind of stockpiling up all on this boat and so on. And so it needs to get picked up by our lovely workmen who then run it all the way over to our storage room over here and just drop it off. How much money are we making in the world? My goodness, we're making a fair amount. 34,000 every 60 seconds is a huge quantity of wealth. It's definitely going to throw our lovely evil empire into the realms of infinite riches. And this is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is an unlimited money exploit created entirely from using only minions. I know. Minions, those little yellow people, turns out they're just really good at making infinite money. At this point, we can kind of step away from our computer and just let the game take over. And you can just leave your PC running overnight and you'll come back and you'll have more money than you can actually physically store on the map. We have completely balked this game. It's broken now. It can never be fixed. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I think one of the things that I absolutely love about this particular exploit is the fact that we are a massive criminal empire with infinite amounts of money. And yet for some reason, there's no one in our base. It's just our lovely evil genius and the one worker who has to man the console so that we know where to steal money from. That is it in terms of this base. We do have all of these 
massive racks for each and every one of our workers and yet they're never here because they're busy stealing infinite quantities of money from the world. Now I'm going to send my 13 minions in uh, Polynesia to do fishy business. What's happening here? Stolen secret documents reveal that Anvil is implementing a new round-the-clock offshore patrol system. <gasps> We can't possibly have that happen. Right, my men, go attack the fishing boats. This is going to be fantastic. Yes, a few workers may die, but trust me, it's a sacrifice I'm willing to take to defeat the fishy business. We only have one notoriety, but our aim is to have 500. To get 500 notoriety, that's no problem. We just need to use only workers. We'll find a way. Fishy business succeeded. Yes, we gained five notoriety. <gasps> Lovely. Good job, my men. You've done fantastic work here. I guess we can go free this dude who's currently stuck in a prison. That sounds like a great use of our time. Now, as you can see, we have 1.2 million in the bank at the moment, and I've actually switched a few of my minions to plotting so that they can try and discover some brand new fun missions for us to do in the future. And also, I think we almost have enough minions to operate a mission down here in India. At the same time, we've discovered a new mission in the Middle East, a lovely oil leak, which will cost governments and businesses millions if we actually cause. So, of course, we're going to do that. Oh, and we can start doing forging ahead. Right, go. A lovely new mission. Bearing in mind, we can do all of these missions and the game is still never going to send a single agent to our island. It doesn't matter how much international chaos we cause, provided that maid is still walking around, the governments of the world think we're just pretty chill dudes. Where is that maid? Oh, here they are just walking around the beaches, enjoying their holiday. Yes, there we go. They're having a lovely time. There we go. We've done it. We managed to successfully free someone from a prison, which has given us even more notoriety as just a fantastic evil dude. And we're going to dump off a bunch of our evil minions in the Middle East to help out with our lovely mission to sabotage the world's oil supply. Alright, I think it's time to do the oil leak. It only requires five workers, but we're going to do it. Fantastic stuff. Lovely. We're making a ridiculous amount of money whilst also sabotaging the world with zero repercussions. This is true untouchable exploits. If this game could even have invincibility, this is it. We can't be stopped. Nothing will defeat our evil empire. We're going to make infinite money and cause infinite chaos. All from the comfort of our own evil mountain Lair. Oh my goodness, a lot of workers died. Wow. Um, around about 30 sadly passed away. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's just so many dead people. We lost about 15 workers in one single swoop. Okay. Luckily we can just crank down the recruitment to recruiting one worker every second. Yes, each worker costs 4,000, but you know, when you have as much money as we do, you might as well. There we go, we succeeded. And I'm going to send over even more workers to help out in the Middle East. There we go. Lovely stuff. But that's another success. That's another five notoriety to us and more heat. Not that heat really matters because we're at maximum heat and yet no one's done anything to stop us. Oh yes, this is the conga line of workmen. Look at this, loading up onto the boat. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh yes, so much evilness is happening. I don't even know how they all fit on that tiny yacht, but you know, they're all just kind of hiding down in the bottom bit. That's yeah, fine. Oh, the money keeps on flowing in and we keep doing these crazy missions. In fact, we only have one mission left um, to do the earplug operation and that's it. It shouldn't take us long at all, actually. This is going to be fantastic. Oh, there we go. We've done it. We've actually managed to complete every single mission that exists on the starting tutorial board, ladies and gentlemen. We've done it. The money is just absolutely flooding in. We have broken every single thing this game has. We have infinite wealth coming in. We're untouchable and we can still complete the mission and gain notoriety and finish the game. Technically speaking, this is ridiculously broken. I love this game and I strongly recommend if you have never played it before, go grab yourself a copy. It's on Steam. I'm pretty sure it's on on GOG as well. It's really well worth your time or just load up your old disc copy if you've got it lying around. It's great fun. And hey, if you have enjoyed it, feel free to give this video a like because you know what? Liking this video is a sign that you don't want your tea supply raided and that means we won't be sending a minion directly to your house to steal your tea. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? We often make videos based off of community recommendations for games that you like and if you do have any recommendations for a game, pop down into the comment section. But for today, I'd like to ask you a question. What video would you like to see next? I have a fun few shenanigans lined up. Would you like to see an RTS exploit, an RPG exploit, or a tycoon exploit? Or would you like to see something completely different and unknown? Anything is possible, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd absolutely love to have your input on this. So hop down into the comment section and throw your opinions into the pile. And don't worry, I'll be reading through all of them. Warning, if your opinion is that Spiff should make a video where he just drinks coffee, your opinion will be immediately disregarded and you will be ejected from the community at a speed of up to 47 knots. You 
have been warned. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of these majestic patrons on screen who make these very strange videos all the more possible. Thank you very much, you generous sausages. And as always, if you're sat there and wondering, hang on a second, I enjoyed this video, wonder what I'd like to watch next. Well, guess what? I've got this one lined up just for you. Trust me, you're gonna love it. It's hand chosen by myself to be downright perfect for everything you're looking for. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit and I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.